Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire supported by Glenlivet Books. A paper accepted by Oxford University Press's QJM, the International Journal of Medicine, convincingly argues that vitamin D supplements can have a very beneficial impact on the treatment of COVID. They sharply reduce the rate of mortality, the need for ICU treatment, as well as ventilation. And this is a critical finding for India because India is one of the countries where vitamin D deficiency is widely prevalent. Joining me now to discuss the paper is its lead author, assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Medical Health in Gandhinagar, Dr. Komal Shah. Dr. Shah, before I come to details and specifics, let me try and understand the nature of the study you've done. You describe it as a review of 10 separate studies on the impact of vitamin D as a treatment for COVID. In fact, you call it a review of reviews. So can you start by briefly and simply telling the audience, what do you mean by a review of reviews? So review is a scientific method of evaluating the findings and summarizing the findings of individual studies. So this kind of technology or scientific method is generally used when the uh, findings which are reported by individual studies, either they are inconsistent or they are uh, very small in nature so that they can't solve your uh, problem. So in that kind of scenario, we try to summarize, we try to pull the findings from individual study and merge it together so that we can come up with something which is meaningful. So our study is review of 10 globally published reviews uh, which we're addressing vitamin D supplementation impact on COVID-19 severity. So that is how uh, we opted for the study design. Now your paper says, and I'm quoting from your paper, that you have observed that vitamin D supplementation reduces the risk of mortality the need for intensive care and the need for ventilation in COVID-19 patients, irrespective of age, gender, race, ethnicity, and comorbidity conditions. Secondly, these studies that you've summarized were done in countries as diverse and far apart as India, China, Indonesia, Greece, the United Kingdom, and Germany. In other words, they span a very large geographical area. So would I be right in saying that the outcome is a pretty comprehensive one that should apply to practically all people in all countries? Definitely. So when we were synthesizing this evidence or when we were summarizing uh, the evidence from the individual study, we realized that the studies are reported from various countries like Spain, Brazil, India, UK, what you said. So uh, we got to know about representative samples from various countries, as well as they have used the population with various comorbid condition. Uh, they were representing the gender also and age group also. So when we tried to summarize these findings, they were representing all the subgroups, what we call the population group. Now the effect of vitamin D used to vary across all the subgroups. Because um, people who are deficient in nature with vitamin D deficiency, if you provide them the supplementation, definitely the improvement would be really better as compared to other people. Similar thing applies to people with comorbid condition. So the degree of effect used to vary. However, there was a consistent finding that it improves the profile irrespective of all these factors. Though we need to have really good and a massive uh, trials or what we call large studies, which are population specific to come up with a meaningful dose of vitamin D, which can be given to this population or recommended to those population. From this study, it is it can be safely placed or generalized that vitamin D is effective irrespective of all these factors. So in all the population, it can show you the beneficiary effects. Let's then, against this background, come to the specifics. And again, I'm going to quote from your study. First of all, it shows that in people receiving vitamin D supplements, the odds of mortality were 52% lower as compared to individuals not receiving vitamin D supplements. So vitamin D clearly has a very significant impact in terms of reducing mortality. Definitely. 
So our study shows that 52% uh, of the risk can be reduced when you are giving the vitamin D supplementation or as a top-on thing or as an adjuvant therapy to your routine care. Over here, we are not stating that the routine care can be replaced with vitamin D. It is something that has to be given along with the routine care. The mortality incidence, definitely it reduced significantly in the people who had got a really good or a, a normal vitamin D level as compared to people who had deficient vitamin D levels. Now, this can vary based on uh, various factors like age group, the person's ability to absorb vitamin D and various other factors. So just like vaccine efficacy, this has a range. But with our study, the average reduction in the risk that was obtained was 52%. Now, secondly, your paper says, and once again, I'm quoting from your paper, it was observed that there is a statistically significant difference between ICU admission rate in patients receiving vitamin D supplements as compared to patients not receiving vitamin D. And in fact, the need for ICU falls by 65%. That's pretty huge, isn't it? 65%. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when we are saying that it reduces the COVID-19 severity, the results were basically coming from the people who were quite deficient. Now, when we looked into the countries which have reported this kind of studies, this country have got really a high number of people who are deficient in vitamin D supplementation. So when you are replenishing those levels, Vitamin D is a molecule which acts on the various pathways. It improves your immunity. It improves your inflammatory marker status. And these studies were conducted from India also. There were a couple of studies which stated that there's improvement in the inflammatory marker status with vitamin D supplementation. So all of this, when worked together, they try to reduce the severity of the disease. They try to uh, uh, take care of your overall immunity. And this effect are quite profound when given in the deficient individual. So definitely people who are going in uh, the ICU, uh, uh, their incidence were quite low when they were supplemented with vitamin D along with their routine practices, routine care. Yes, but the incidence of ICU treatment fell by 65%. That is a very large number, isn't it? Yes, so that is what we are getting from the study. Absolutely. Let me then come to your third finding. And again, I'm quoting from your study. The, there is a reduction in odds of requiring ventilation support in patients treated with vitamin D supplementation as compared to others without vitamin D treatment. And again, the reduction in the need for ventilation is 46%. Again, it's a very substantial number, isn't it? Yes. So vitamin D uh, has shown its impact in various other respiratory tract diseases also. So when we are talking about COVID, when it reduces the severity of COVID, somewhere down the line, it is working in the same scenario. When we are talking about this kind of numbers, let me tell you for respiratory tract diseases and other uh, acute infection, vitamin uh, D supplementation has given similar kind of findings. It is very well established. When you give these supplements to the deficient individuals, the, the improvements are quite massive. So this is from the COVID uh, uh, study from various geographical locations. But we need to take care of the fact that these findings are coming from very, very small studies. Because we summarized all the study, we could come to a conclusion. But when we want to implement it, we need to get the population-based, really specific, huge studies also. Now, let me at this point come to your conclusion. And once again, I'm quoting from your study. You write, the current evidence suggests that vitamin D has a major role in lowering COVID-19 related mortality, ICU hospitalizations and ventilation. And then you continue, as a result, we believe that supplementary vitamin D can be safely added to the existing COVID-19 treatment procedures. And just for the sake of the audience, I'll remind them that vitamin D reduces the odds of mortality by 52%, the need for ICU hospitalization by 65%, the need for ventilation by 46%. All of those are very substantial percentages. Yeah. 
So definitely when we think of this kind of recommendation, especially from Indian context, we need to go back to our previous statistics. So from India, if you uh, could recollect or just to give our audience a hint, in community-based study, we realize that there, there is a deficiency which could be as high as 90%. So vitamin D deficiency is highly prevalent in Indian context. And when you are supplementing these things, then the effect could be really huge. Absolutely. And that's the point I want to pick up. And I made it in my introduction. Your findings are critical for India because the Indian population has a very high vitamin D deficiency. This is a direct result of, I believe, our pigmentation and the way it absorbs UV radiation. So in India, given the vitamin D deficiency that is prevalent right across the population, this finding that vitamin D as a supplement reduces mortality very sharply, reduces the need for ICU hospitalization very sharply, reduces the need for ventilator very sharply. This is a critical finding for the Indian population in particular, isn't it? Definitely. And uh, I would like to quote one or two Indian studies also, though we could not find very uh, large number of Indian studies uh, when we were doing this review. There were one or two Indian studies which have shown that people who are not very good with their vitamin D level, they have a very bad COVID outcome. So when we say that there are no studies from India, uh, it is not correct. So vitamin D supplementation has shown improvement in Indian context also. So definitely the deficient individuals, they should be recommended with this particular uh, supplement because it is harmless, safely available. It is uh, easy to pursue also. So that is what uh, it should be included. Now, so far, we've talked about the very substantial impact of vitamin D as a therapeutic treatment for those who've got COVID-19. Does vitamin D also work as a prophylactic to prevent or to guard against COVID-19? That is a very important question because a lot of people are uh, taking up these medicines and uh, maybe they are not aware of their baseline levels. So first of all, people who are deficient in this vitamin D, they should be definitely getting this uh, supplementation. And there are scattered reports which have stated that if they are supplemented well, there would be a lesser chances of them getting other infection, including COVID-19. This particular protocols have been exp like established in other respiratory tract diseases also. And there are evidences from other countries which have stated that the COVID incidence can also be reduced. So if you are deficient in vitamin D, definitely you should achieve the optimum level of vitamin D through the supplementation. So if I understand your answer correctly, and I'm only spelling it out so that there's no mistake, you're saying that although there may not be specific studies done in India, but there are studies done elsewhere that show that high levels or good levels of vitamin D can work as a prophylactic. They can protect and prevent and guard against COVID. Yes, absolutely. In which case, my last question, and it's a question that will be occurring to the audience right through this interview, so let me put it to you. Should people who are healthy and want to avoid getting COVID start taking regular vitamin D tablets? So for that, if you are deficient under the supervision of your clinician, you should definitely take it up. If you need to get your baseline level checked, if it is below 20, a nanogram per ml, uh, that is a set cutoff. And if it is below that threshold, I think you should consult your clinician and definitely you should go ahead with that. But if you have an optimum level of vitamin D, I think there is no need to consume extra vitamin D. So you're saying a very important thing. You're saying people whose vitamin D levels, their baseline is below 20, having checked it and having consulted their doctor should definitely take supplementary vitamin D because it will work to protect them. But if their baseline is at a safe level, it is above 20, then they don't need additional vitamin D. Is that right? Yes. So they should reach to that normal level, which is a 50. So if they are reaching to that normal level, then there is no need to have some uh, additional supplementation. But if they have insufficiency or deficiency, definitely they should be considered. One normal. last question. Do we have any sense of what is the average vitamin D level in the Indian population? Because we do know that by and large, Indians are vitamin D deficient. So do you have any sense of what is the average level across the population? 
that is also quite very and where one arbitrary number might not be the correct one because just like the deficiency which is ranging from uh, 37% to 99% the average level is also varying like this it could be from 5 to 30 or something like that so okay. we cannot so it varies, go down it, to one level. it varies from person to person and it varies from population group to population group but the important point you're saying is that good levels of vitamin D do work as a prophylactic, they do protect. And since India has a population that is generally vitamin D deficient, it would be wise of people to get their vitamin D baselines checked. And if they discover they are below the threshold of 20, then with their doctor's advice, they should start taking supplementary vitamin D because it will protect them. I thank you for this, yes. Dr. Shah. I think it is advice that many people will be very grateful to receive. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you.